Hello everybody. Today uh, the topic I want to discuss is something that's been bugging me a little bit about various environmental activists. And um, environmentalism, at least in regards to climate change, has gotten so far into the mainstream, especially with the media and various governments, that this topic it's sort of like a glaring oversight. It's like, how can, could the environmental movement be so central to so many organizations like the UN and the European Union and various, you know, kind of globalist entities and have the degree of power that those entities have without realizing this strategy would be an option? And then if this strategy isn't being used, well then, it, it sort of undermines the original narrative of the environmental activists because the environmental activists have doubled down and doubled down with their rhetoric to the point that you've got prominent figures like the Greta Girl and AOC and just various people coming out and saying, hey, we've got a very limited time span before we have complete destruction or at least irreversible change that's going to cause such and such amount of economic damage to the world. And so they've, they've come out with this very intense, very fearful message. And if they've done this, but this other strategy has been here the whole time, you know, that they've purely been focusing on, say, activism and political movements and protests and boycotts. And they're such a powerful organization. Why haven't they used this other strategy that's available to them? Well, what strategy am I talking about? Well, it's called short selling stocks or stock markets. And if you're not familiar with short selling, if you're familiar with the stock market at all, uh, when people, <clears throat> you may have heard the term going long, that's what people normally do when they buy stocks. They hope that a stock is going to go up in price in the future, so they buy it, and then they want to sell it in the future at a profit. But there's also a way to go short the market, which is, you believe that the price of a stock is going to go down in the future. So what you can do is convince someone that owns stock to sell their stock now. And basically, you're going to collect that amount of money now. And you agree to a certain time frame in which you're going to buy that stock back for them. And what that does is it uh, effectively, you're believing that you're going to be able to buy that stock back for them at a cheaper price than the money you were able to get for selling the stock now. So basically, you repay them the stock that you owe them, but you get to keep the difference in money compared to what you sold it for now and what the price of the stock is later because in your prediction, the value of these various stocks are only going to be lower in the future, right? So this is a very powerful strategy. And if you have a doomsday philosophy that we're going to start seeing these cataclysmic events happening to the environment that are going to wipe out ecosystems and derail economies, well, there's going to be this intermediate time frame where the stock market is constantly looking to the future. It's full of investors looking at different options and what's going to happen. And if you're right, eventually the market is going to discover that you're right too. And all of these stocks that are highly valued are going to start going to shit because they've believed your doomsday narrative about the environment and all the future profits that they're imagining themselves making that are keeping their stock value high in the present are going to go away. And instead, you're going to get this pessimism where it's like, whoa, 
whatever investments we have, we're going to have to radically change. And a, and a lot of the infrastructure that we have is going to be useless because of this environmental problem that we have. And we've completely screwed up. So the valuation of all of our stocks are going to be way lower because stocks are usually valued on the expected returns they're going to make in the future. And if the expected returns in the future are going to be crap because a bunch of environmental activists have convinced the market that the value of, of you know, because of the doomsday narrative, you know, that all these things are going to happen and they are happening and you actually see signs of the economy faltering because of changing weather patterns. Well, then you've got this potent, huge potential strategy. It's like the stock market is near all time highs. You know, it's bouncing around uh, a, a few thousand points from here or there. But, you know, it's nowhere near the, the 2008 lows. And if this environmental negative environmental narrative is true, then it should go way below the 2008 lows that we had in the last crisis. Right. And so you've got this powerful mainstream entities you know globalists they have tons of money and tons of influence but what do they do they don't do anything except protest and try to steal people's rights in the political forum and get taxes passed why aren't they using this other strategy if you you have money presumably because you're mainstream uh globalist entities with a lot of power and authority You've got some capital kicking around somewhere, don't you? You know, these are these are aren't, you know, just peasants that are holding these ideas. These are educated people that are affluent that have all of this, you know, assumably a uh, uh, reserve capital that they could invest in a certain way if they strongly believed about a certain narrative. And they strongly believe that we've got this, you know, 10 or 12 year time frame where the whole world is going to come to an end, literally, or at least there is going to be some kind of traumatic damage that no one will be able to avoid. And it's going to be right in front of us and we need to take dramatic action right now. Why aren't they shorting the stock market? Take that money, take all that time and energy that they're trying to put into the political system to force control over your mind's actions in the economy, uh, you know, so that they can get control, so that they can control these bureaucracies and decide which winners and losers there's going to be in the economy so that they get more control, so that they can protect themselves and pick the winners and losers in the economy. That's really what they want. They want a centrally planned economy with themselves and their so-called experts at the top. And everybody else subject to this crazy amount of taxation, no economic freedom, no freedom of speech, no, no means to defend yourself. That's the ideal world for these technocratic individuals. They want to control uh, society through government, and they'll use whatever fear is necessary to get you to submit to that government. And in this case, that fear is unavoidable environmental damage. But, they're, but they have to go through the government processes is what they're trying to go through to get this. But they don't have to. Like I said, they've got a ton of money. They've got influence and power and, and capital. And they believe these things. But they're not shorting the stock market. And so what can you say about all of these people when they do all of these things in the political arena, even when they have money, but it's all invested in, you know, business as usual. Yeah, they might have some green tech kind of investments that they're making, but why stop there? Why not short the companies that you know in your heart are going to take a massive hit because of climate change? If you believe that, why aren't you shorting those companies? You know, you should be shorting Walmart because they're not going to be able to get cheap commodities and cheap food anymore, right? Let, let short Walmart and, and let short Amazon because they have all these delivery trucks and delivery trucks run on fossil fuels for the most part. You know, you've got a few experimental models of, uh, of uh, battery powered stuff. But, you know, that that Tesla, most of the 18 wheeler trailer is the battery. You know, it can't compete against a regular gas or natural gas powered vehicle or diesel. Right. So you've got all of these mainstream, you know, main, mainstream companies that 
all these greenies are are in them, you know. Let let short Whole Foods because food prices are going to go up due to climate change, right? That that means their input costs are going to go up. Let let short them. Let's short Kraft. Let short uh, General Mills. Let short anything that represents business as usual, right? Because business as usual is going away if you believe their narrative. So there's the contradiction. They're invested in the status quo. You know, they're, they're out there on the fringe with some tech companies that end up being frauds most of the time. And that's not to say I'm, I'm not hopeful for alternative energy, but I'm looking more at stuff like fusion than sitting around and waiting for us to, uh, you know, run the whole civilization on wind turbines. When you actually get into the details of the engineering, it just doesn't become possible once you actually learn about the energy inputs and the return on energy investments of these things. So they should be shorting the stock market, and they're not. And since they're not, the only thing, the only conclusion I can really come to is they don't believe their own narrative. You know, they, it's been out there since I was a kid. You know, in the 90s, Ted Turner uh, had all the TV stations. He had the cartoon stations. And Captain Planet was right there to tell me that the whole world was fucked and we were the bad guys and we needed to give up our responsibility, you know, to uh, the government so that they can run everything and they can decide everything and, and they're the good guys. They can keep the environment safe, but they need all the tax money and they need to take all your rights. They need to take your freedom of speech and your free, uh, your right to self-defense uh, because we can't have anybody overthrowing this government. It's too much of a, of a risk, you know, and you can't vote them out like the European Union because, you know, you're destroying the planet by uh, establishing your sovereignty. Uh, they have to have complete control because they're o- the only ones that can save the environment, Right. That, that's their, their saying. Well, they don't really believe that. If they believed that, they wouldn't be relying on a single political strategy to try to steal your rights and get control of the system through politics. There's this second tool available to them, the market. And, and they don't have to win any political battles. They don't have to win any elections. They don't have to convince anybody in order to take these positions today. They could take these positions today and they could date them to where their predictions uh, are going to, where they believe their predictions are going to come true. You know, they say, let me sell your stock now. I will buy your stock of Walmart and Amazon back for you a year from now or two years from now or three years from now. And there's a fee that you pay uh, in order to do that. But there's a lot of people that will say, wait, you're going to pay me, you're going to give me the the stock back that I think is going to go up in three years, and you're going to pay me uh, for waiting those three years, there's a lot of people who will take that option up. All you got to do is ask. There's an active market for this. You don't have to convince anybody. You don't have to win an election. You don't have to get the UN General Assembly to do anything. You don't have to steal any country's sovereignty. All you have to do is put your money where your mouth is. But they're not doing it. The Greens are not shorting the conventional economy because they don't believe their own narrative. Or at least they don't believe it enough to put their own money at risk in the system. And that's, and to me, that just is another screaming reason that their whole narrative is complete bullshit. It's just the two main motivators for humans are fear of loss and greed for gain. And fear of loss is actually a stronger emotion than greed of gain because a, a, a loss hurts people psychologically when you study this. A loss hurts people more than a win offsets in the mind of a person, right? So what do they do? They cook up the strongest fear they can come up with. The world is coming to an end. It's a free country's fault. It's democracy's fault. It's capitalism's fault. And we need complete control in order to fix this problem. And if not, you're dead 10 years from now. And that's what they tell people, because they're trying to manipulate people through fear. 
But if they really believed it, if they really believed this, they would not be wasting their time waving banners and protesting. They would be saving up money, going to the stock market, taking these massive funds, and shorting the stock market. Because because they, they know it's going to happen in the future. They're so certain of it. And they know it's going to cause massive damage. And so somewhere in the middle there, they're going to be able to make all this money. And then once they have all of this money from shorting the stock market, maybe they can do something. Maybe they can invest in some green technology or at least, you know, build a bunker up on some mountainside or move to the North Pole with their billions in stock market earnings. You know, if they really believe this narrative, but they don't do it. And it's because they know the stock market isn't going to go down for environmental reasons. It might go down for other reasons. It also might go to the moon due to hyperinflation. You know, so that's a whole nother story. But I just couldn't, you know, when, when I put the pieces together on this idea, I, could, I couldn't believe it. It's like, why aren't the Greens shorting the stock market? And if the Greens aren't shorting the stock market, they must believe that their narrative is wrong. Because otherwise, they'd be doing it today with the sort of urgency they put out there with their message. Why wouldn't all of their money be shorting the stock market right now? What do you think? Do you think this inconsistency explains something about the environmental movement? Let me know in the comments. I hope you found this an interesting discussion and have a great rest of your day.